like I said, visual effects are solutions to problems and they are sources of inspiration. So I wanted to show you just a few things that are possible with uh, Adobe After Effects. Things that are solutions to very small problems uh, that might save you time on the day uh, by not spending a bunch of time waiting around on planes to leave frame or waiting for some art design to get set up. Now, this isn't even really a tutorial per se. It's more a demonstration of what is possible so that you can feel kind of empowered and a little less intimidated by After Effects or by visual effects. And also so you can know uh, what kinds of things are reasonable to ask for from a visual effects supervisor or a visual effects artist. Okay, so here I've got this plate of me uh, standing there looking handsome. And I've got this plane in the background uh, looking not handsome. So erasing it is insanely easy with a brand new thing that After Effects has called Content Aware Fill. So the first thing I wanna start by doing, I need to create a, what's called a mask around this plane. It can be created by, you can uh, use the rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle, any of these things to select your plane. Uh, or I could grab the pin tool here and I could uh, draw a mask around the plane. When I do that, you'll see now I only see the plane. And that's because down here in my plane layer, uh, the mask is set to add, which means uh, when it's set, as long as it's set to add, it's only going to show what is inside the mask. Uh, subsequently, if I put subtract, it shows only what is outside the mask. I'm going to eventually put it on subtract, but for now I want it to be none because I'd like to see where my mask is. I like to see everything while I'm working with this mask. If I hit play, you'll see my plane leaves this mask area. I go down to mask path, and I can click this little uh, timer that creates a dot right there. It's called a keyframe. Keyframes are for animation. On this keyframe, the mask is right here. If I go to the end, and I move the mask to right here, everything in between, it is interpolating what it needs to be doing between this keyframe and that keyframe, creating an animation. So now, it's following my plane. All right, so now I'm gonna go down to here and I'm going to click subtract, and we're done. Just kidding. Obviously, now we want to invoke content to wear fill. I could go up to window and find content to wear fill, or I can go right here over my sidebar, which is where it is. Uh, and I'm going to, my fill method is set to object, my range is set to work area. I'm just going to click generate fill layer. You can see it's analyzing. And now it's rendering. Oh, my plane is gone. So what it's doing is it's going in and, and, and basically what you're saying is uh, any parts that are cut out, that are missing from my sequence, uh, that are masked out, for example, I want you to fill them in with your smart genius imagery that you can create based on what is around it. Now, another way you can do this that is shockingly somehow easier than that, Red Giant has a plugin called Spot Clone Tracker. That's part of uh, Red Giant VFX Suite. If I drop that on here, we have these two nodes here. Basically what Spot Clone Tracker does, it basically says, I want you to take whatever is in the blue and put it on whatever is on the orange. So if I put the orange one on top of the plane and I put the blue one right here on the blue, it erases the plane. Uh, but what about when the plane, you know, leaves the orange dot? Well, that's easy. You just go up here and click track. And now that plane is gone. Crazy easy. Another thing that I am doing constantly is replacing signage or adding signage to scenes. You know, there's a, a lot of times where we're shooting at a location and I the location is standing in for one place or a place that doesn't exist, or we're shooting in a location that has signage on it that can't be removed or be too difficult to remove, or I'm shooting in a location we don't have permission to shoot in and definitely don't have permission to do any art design on. So in post, I will go in and I will add signage or replace signage or change signage. So I wanna show you how easy that is here and how I generally go about doing that. So you can see here I've got this shot, a uh, handheld shot, of two signs on a pole. We wanna start by tracking the shot. And that's really easy by to get a camera track because there's a button here in After Effects that says track camera. So with this uh, layer selected, I'll click track camera. And now we have these cool little uh, dots. And you see if I put my mouse over it, it's triangulating a surface based on these points. So if I go up here and I either you know right click or control click 
right here, I can do create solid and camera. And immediately that created a 3D camera and a solid in 3D space. So let me show you how this 3D camera is working. The solid is actually not moving. It is staying absolutely still. If I turn my camera off, you see it's sitting absolutely still. It's the camera that is moving. Say for instance, let's, I'll show you like, watch out. If I put some text in, now it's not moving. And that's because it's a 2D layer. If I make, if I make it a 3D layer by clicking this little cube thing, now it's a 3D layer in 3D space. And look at that, it's just floating out there. Now what if I wanted that text to be on the sign? Well, that's why we created the solid. By going down here, I can select the position and copy. I can go to the text and I can paste it, and now it is in the position of that solid. I actually have created a sign, beware of lions. So I'm gonna drop this down into here into my comp. Now we wanna make it a 3D layer, obviously. And I'm gonna go to our solid, select our position, copy it, lion sign, paste. All right, so now it's there, but we need to do a little magic to line it up right. So what I like to do is I go to 50% opacity so I can see through it. Then I'll scale it. I'll move its rotation around. Turn that opacity back up. And now our sign has been replaced. Now it may not look super convincing, right? We need to kind of affect the color here to match the background. I'm gonna start by applying some brightness and contrast. I can turn the brightness down. I can even turn the, I can turn the contrast down a little bit. I'm gonna click Use Legacy because that creates much more dynamic. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now another crazy thing is I don't love these clouds up here. These aren't the coolest clouds that could be. They're a little bit overexposed. So I actually can just replace that sky. I already have my tracking data in here. So what I wanna do is first I need to get rid of this sky. I'll start by applying a any kind of key layer. I tend to go toward the linear color key, but like in here is where you would get rid of green screens or do like a luma key. With this, I'm able to select the color of the sky and then I can play with the knobs until it looks pretty decently gone. Now we need our new sky. So I have this sky layer right here picture that I took years ago and I've used this guy in tons of stuff. We're gonna need the position data for where to put it. If I go back in here, I turn off my, my color key. I'm only seeing tracking points for on my sign, but there, I, you can see that little target shows up back here on the tree, which means that there are tracking points that you just can't really see them. So I can turn up my track point size. So now if I just want the furthest possible, you know, point that I could get, I'll just select that point and create a null. And a null object is something that will not show up in a render. It's literally just a invisible little object and it's for you to use for a lot of variety of utilities uh, and such. I have a null back here, a tracking null, and that's for me to get my position data. So copy and go down to my sky. First, let's turn our linear color key back on so we can see our sky. And then I wanna make sure that my sky is 3D. So I make it 3D and then I will paste that position data and there it is. So now I wanna scale it up real big, move it around. Suddenly I have a much prettier sky. So this is really handy and useful for when you are on the day shooting and the sun has almost gone down but you still have enough light to get your wide shot but the sky was supposed to be blue. Uh, you can do this in post. You can plan for a sky replacement. I highly recommend going to videocopilot.net and watching Andrew Kramer's tutorials, going to redgiant.com and looking up our tutorials that we do there. There is tons of stuff out there to help you learn the basics of After Effects and even the crazy advanced stuff of After Effects that you can watch and just cherry pick things to open up After Effects and mess around with. <laughs>